Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Pro Acoustics Tech Talk. I'm Nathan and we're here today to talk all about uh, 70 volt amplifiers, selecting the right amplifier and how uh, 70 volt transformer taps work. Uh, so when selecting the right 70 volt amplifier for your application, uh, first we need to talk about what is an amplifier. Basically an audio amplifier is an electronic amplifier required to boost or amplify the power of an input signal high, uh, high enough to where it will drive your speakers. Uh, basically an amplifier will take audio signal and turn it into uh, wattage, like electrical signal, uh, which then will allow your speakers to, to move, to drive your speakers. Um, it's all about electricity and electrical signals. Um, so when choosing a 70 volt amplifier to power your speakers, um, you'll need to know how do you match the amplifier to the right speaker power. Um, basically, 70 volt technology allows us to take lots of speakers and run um, on one individual wattage line, or one speaker line, and have a fixed wattage and a constant voltage. Um, basically, all 70 volt speakers have a transformer built in, uh, attached to them, uh, mounted on the back, uh, inside of the speaker like we do with these surface mounts, uh, to where there's always a 70 volt setting assigned to that speaker. Um, basically, that's referred to what's known as a tap. Uh, like you'll see on the back of the Yamaha speaker here, this is a VS6, you have a dial um, that has a series of numbers on it. Uh, an 8 ohm, which is what's known as a 70, uh, an 8 ohm bypass, which means it doesn't have anything to do with uh, 70 volt as we're discussing it here. Uh, but then you also have these numbers uh, on a side that says 70 V. Uh, on this particular speaker, 3.1, 8.2, uh, 12 and a half, and 25. That determines how much wattage this particular speaker is going to draw. Um, that is its tap. For the purpose of this uh, demonstration, I'm going to turn this screw to the 25 watt tap, uh, basically to where the screw is pointing at the 70 volt 25. So basically, you assign whatever tap setting you want to any individual speaker. That's really important to do if you're installing a 70 volt system as soon as you get it to determine what 70 volt tap you're going to use. Um, so what 70 volt tap should you use? Typically, we want to tap speakers at basically the highest available tap setting for the application. So what that means is in cases like um, restaurants and things like that, we normally don't need 200 watt speakers. Uh, so if you've got a speaker that has a 200 watt tap, you probably don't need it quite to that level. That's not the desired tap setting. Uh, but if you're doing a sports bar or restaurant that might get a little bit rowdy, um, on a speaker like this that has a 25 watt tap, we probably don't want to start at the two watt setting because it's not going to be very loud. Uh, the wattage tap on a speaker also determines how loud that speaker will get. So um, it's normally a good idea to at least shoot for the middle tap setting, if not one of the higher tap settings when determining um, how much wattage you're going to need for your application. Um, because like I said, that wattage determines how loud that speaker will get. A speaker that only is getting 2 watts is not going to be as loud as a speaker that's getting 25 watts because you know that's over 12 times as much power. So uh, we definitely want to keep that in mind when determining what amplifier we want and what speaker taps we want to use. We also want to take into consideration headroom. Normally we want to leave um, at least 20% headroom on the amplifier that's not being used. The purpose of that headroom uh, basically allows uh, the amplifier to create the uh, wattage without any distortion. Uh, when you're listening to your favorite song, sometimes you'll hear loud parts, sometimes you'll hear really quiet parts. Uh, an amplifier being a loud, you know, that additional headroom means that it can take into consideration those peaks and valleys, those jumps and drops in that music. Uh, if we're using all of the amplifier and there's no headroom, we're all the way up at the top, uh, there's not a lot of room for taking into consideration that range, and also that can lead to the amplifier trying to drive too much wattage, which can push it into clipping. Clipping is basically a distortion of the waveform. Uh, so what does that mean to you? Basically the distortion of that waveform or that clipping normally indicated um, on a clip light on an amplifier, uh, flashing red light, um, that can lead to choppy or distorted audio. Um, basically it sounds a little distorted when you hear you know, the cymbal crash on a loud rock song or a uh, person talking suddenly sounds a little distorted or overdriven. And over time that distortion can damage your speakers and cause pretty serious issues. So we want to avoid clipping as much as possible. So when designing a 70 volt system, we need to figure out how much wattage do we need overall? 
that's a pretty simple math question, basically. Uh, what we're going to do is basically take our number of speakers um, and at their desired tap setting and add all that up. Uh, for this application here in front of me, I'm simulating basically a small, uh, small diner or small restaurant with two Yamaha VS6s and an amplifier. I'm going to go ahead and tap this speaker at the 25 watt setting. I might want it a little bit loud in there, um, but I can always turn it down at the amplifier if I'm worried about having too much wattage. So I tap this speaker at the 25 watt setting. I'm going to go ahead and tap this speaker at the 25 watt setting. And basically, adding together the wattage taps of these two speakers, I'm at 50 watts. Like we mentioned earlier, we want to try and add that 20% headroom. 20% uh, of 50, I happen to know off the top of my head, is 10. Uh, so that means we need at least a 60 watt amplifier. If we have more speakers, we'll obviously need a larger amplifier. So, using these 25 watt taps, I can actually um, do up to eight speakers off of this 240 watt mixer amplifier that's in front of me. Uh, eight times 25 is 200. That gives me some, some uh, headroom to play with underneath the uh, 240 watt uh, max output. Uh, also, one thing we don't need to be concerned about with 70 volt is having too large of an amplifier. I can tap this speaker at one watt or have a one watt speaker on a 240 watt amplifier. Uh, that transformer tap determines that speaker is only going to get one watt. So even if I turn up that 240 watt amplifier all the way, um, which I won't want to do because it'll probably start to show clipping or distortion on the front just because of turning the amplifier all the way up, um, I won't overdrive or distort that one watt speaker um, because it's only tapped at the one watt setting. As I adjust that tap setting up and turn it up higher, it'll start to draw more wattage from the amplifier and will get louder. Also, I might want to add an outdoor patio to my restaurant or a subwoofer down the road. And with 70 volt system, as long as I still have wattage left over and plenty of headroom, I can add as many speakers as I want. Should you find with an, an existing mixer amplifier that you're out of wattage, um, that you don't have any additional headroom, once again, let's say I have eight of these speakers, most amplifiers have some way, either a line level output or an audio output on the amplifier itself that we can take a feed out of that amplifier to feed another amplifier, and then basically we can start the whole process over again of how many speakers we need, what wattage we need, um, and what tap settings for our future speakers we're going to add. So hopefully that helps to shine a little bit of light on how 70 volt audio works. Um, it's important to always take a look at the tap settings as we mentioned and take into consideration headroom. If you do have any questions about what amplifier is right for your application, what amplifier we would recommend, definitely reach out to us. Drop me a line down below and let us know if you're watching, if we can help with anything else. And once again, I'm Nathan. Until next time, guys.